deadly school shooting in Parkland, and more of our special report on the Holocaust class that became a target during the shooting on February the 14th. CBS 4's Rick Fulbaum is here with part two of his exclusive. Rick? Elliot, two kids were killed and four more wounded when the shooter opened fire into that Holocaust class classroom that terrible day. The students went from learning about hatred to seeing it firsthand. Sid Fisher, Daniel Zifrani, Kelly Plower, and yeah, Hannah Carbozzi exactly, were all in Mrs. Ivy Seamus' Holocaust class when the shooting took place. I always think about it to this day. I always think about what if I went into that corner? What if I was, what if I chose to go left instead of right? And what if I was where they were? What if I was shot? Those who went to the right survived. Those who went to the opposite corner of the classroom were shot. It was that random. Two of their classmates were killed. Nicholas Dwarette and Helena Ramsey. Four others were wounded. I just prayed that he wouldn't come in our classroom because if he did, it would have been just, we would have all been killed. After the shooting, it was revealed that he'd scrawled a swastika, the Nazi symbol, onto one of his ammunition magazines. For Ivy Seamus, the lessons of the Holocaust came alive in that classroom horror. It's a class she's taught at Stoneman Douglas for the last four years. When the principal said that we could have this elective, I was the first one to like jump up and say, I would like to do it. I just, it's very important, it's necessary. I met up with the class while they toured the Craig and Barbara Wiener Holocaust Reflection and Resource Room at Nova Southeastern University in Davie. It's something that's in my roots, you know, I'm Jewish and I feel like learning about people that have went through horrible tragedies is, you have to learn about them to, you know, understand what they went through. Kelly's great-grandmother survived Auschwitz. We refer to those uh, who made it through the Holocaust as survivors, your, your great-grandmother. We could use the same word to describe all of you. Has that occurred to you? We were just like trying to stay alive how like the people in the Holocaust are trying to stay alive. So I guess we could be called like survivors. I think that once we're stripped of our innocence like that, I think that's when you, the moment you call survivors. Also with the paral paralism, parallelism, <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with yes. the Holocaust, like also I feel like a lot of survivors also have survivor's guilt. Like I have survivor's guilt also. So I think that also goes along with it because like, I think like people also like back then they thought that they could do more things, but they didn't or like they couldn't, just like how I felt like I couldn't do more. Yeah, I feel like I could have told Nick and Helena or everyone in that corner, I could have been like, come to this corner, it's more safe. And But how did you, how would you have known? Well, yeah, that's the thing. It happened so fast. Yeah, it happened he, under 30 and he, seconds. And he mo was moving the weapon in yeah. the window. Yeah. So there, it was, I thought that too, but there was, there was really no way to know. I think about it like, it just, I don't, when I don't think about it, it just, like it comes up on me. I told them that Holocaust survivors I've met talk of a need to share their story. Do you feel that kind of responsibility now where you need to go out and tell your story and create witnesses to what you experienced? Yeah, because I feel like if you're just watching the news and you hear about this the shooting and you just see, you know, your only view is of a helicopter of my school, I feel like you don't understand the reality of the situation. I feel like if I tell you my story firsthand, I feel like you'll more you'll understand what I actually went through. Ivy, we spoke to you the day after the shooting, and this is what you told us. You said these kids, the ones that, that witness this, are going to be the ones that are going to spread love. I know they are. What did you mean by that? And are you seeing it? I, I am seeing it. Yes, they're taking that terrible tragedy, and hopefully, that's what, I'm seeing this optimism though, and they're turning it around, hopefully, to make it um, a, a message that they can spread. And, and love is it way better than hate. And I got a text this morning from Mrs. Seamus who told me that she just found out that she's being awarded the Anne Frank Education Award for her work teaching kids about the Holocaust. She'll be awarded her prize this June in New York City. And I've gotten to know her a little bit uh, working on this story and being in touch with her. She's just an amazing teacher and there's so much love between her and her students. So I'm glad that she's being recognized you, for her work. You can see it and they're so yeah. strong. Rick, how are they dealing with, with this grief? Are they getting professional help? Well, a lot of them did initially. Uh, but some of them told me when I was talking with them that they felt like 
they didn't really have anything more to talk to a counselor or a therapist about, that the, it was just sort of the same thing repetitious over and over again, so some of them have stopped doing that. But they are getting together as a group, they're spending time outside of the classroom together, and that's when they say they feel the most comfortable is when they're all together. They're an inspiration to so many of us. Thank you very much.